Greetings, netizens of YouTube. So this isn't a bona fide video, more of a half video, half vlog. Some of you may have caught the Thunderfoot is a Nazi live stream from last night with Laughing Rich, Kevin Logan, Jenny McDermott, Bewildered Abe, Sargon and Uma, and myself. At one stage I mentioned Thunderfoot's open marketplace or free marketplace of ideas. It's an expression he uses quite often, but it's an expression that people are pretty loose with. This is what Wikipedia has to say. A marketplace of ideas is a rationale for freedom of expression based on an analogy to the economic concept of a free market. The marketplace of ideas holds that the truth will emerge from the competition of ideas in free, transparent public discourse. The marketplace of ideas concludes that ideas and ideologies will be culled according to their superiority or inferiority and widespread acceptance among the population. Essentially, it means that the sum of what we see and hear around us is the best of humanity. Poor ideas become unpopular and fail, good ideas and ideologies become accepted. The twin of this ideology is laissez-faire or free market economics, with no government regulation. The market is supposed to regulate itself and the best are supposed to triumph. Now isn't the time for a critique, suffice to say that laissez-faire economics, in my opinion, is complete nonsense. But back to the stream. In the stream, I wanted to know Sargon of Akkad's opinion on the topic in the context of YouTube, but obviously failed to express myself. If a new YouTuber was to create a high-quality channel producing content that contains superior ideas and information, I wondered whether it would be possible for such a channel to become popular or to win in this free marketplace of ideas. Look, let me explain. You see, there's this place where grown-ups go called the open marketplace of ideas. Hank from Breaking Bad is just a fat Bruce Willis. <laughs> and people there are free to say pretty much whatever they want. Indeed, the wider implications of such a question was posed by Agents of Doubt's latest video, which is worth watching. He clearly believes that it isn't possible to win on YouTube's marketplace of ideas without using cynical methods. I am inclined to agree. Link in the description. Unfortunately, Sargon interpreted my clumsily worded question with a kind of riposte aimed at those who want to raise taxes pushing the politics of envy, or that jealousy angle. Those that don't win out in the free marketplace of ideas are essentially jealous of those that do, at least in the YouTube context. This was a pity, because it's an interesting question, and if he didn't understand it, I must admit I was guilty of not phrasing it correctly myself. Thunderfoot has a variation of the marketplace of ideas. He seems to interpret it as the right of people being able to offend or to praise others. The best ideologies and ideas winning out seems to be less important than everybody, no matter how stupid or intelligent, having the right to say their piece. Although there is overlap between the free market of ideas and free speech, the latter represents the means, whilst the free market of ideas represents the assumed end. I've received a few comments and private messages from people expressing disappointment with my position on Laughing Witch. It seems that some have taken support that I and others have expressed as meaning that we agree with everything that Laughing Witch says or does. My incredulity at some of the outlandish accusations levelled against her and the associated feeding frenzy appears to have confirmed this impression. My friendship with Laughing Witch and disdain at the personal attacks upon her and her business aside, I would appreciate it if every person involved in this mess be treated as an individual and be held accountable for their own actions. But clearly each of us have personal and political biases. How is it possible to run a fair and independent channel, relatively speaking, having these biases concerning others? Biases that I believe everybody has. The answer is simple, by recognising them. The same is true with personal and political beliefs. Even though I'm obviously of the left of the political spectrum, that does not mean I'm unable to see merits in arguments tabled from a more traditionally right-wing perspective. Nor do I discriminate against those that come from that perspective, if they are arguing in good faith and are willing to concede when they are wrong. 
In real life, I have always resisted political labels and personally consider my views to be independent that just happen to intersect with principles of the left, such as equality, social justice and civil liberties. Perhaps a more fundamental feeling is my scepticism of authority and wariness of the madness of crowds or those that attempt to exploit their madness. One other thing. Just to let you know what's going on on this channel, I'm in the process of creating a video response to Sargon's latest in his series of neo-progressivism, so watch out for that. In light of Agent of Doubt effectively doxing Bewildered Ape in his most recent video, I feel bound to say that although I agree that in most cases there is no meritocratic method of achieving success on YouTube, I certainly do not condone doxing or bottom-of-the-barrel style gutter journalism as a means of gaining attention or notoriety. I'm forced to wonder where is the limit to this amorality? Agent of Doubt obviously has taken a calculated risk that nobody will try to physically harm Bewildered Ape if they work out where he lives. But what if he's wrong? What kind of person takes these kinds of risks with other people's lives, calculated or not? 